Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be showing you how to mate with bishop and knight. And so, the goal, right, is, is you want to be able to mate the opponent's king in the same color as your bishop, right? So, it's essentially, the only way to give a checkmate is to mate in the corner that's the same color as your bishop. So, what you have to do is first, the, 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 winning, the winning step should be first force the king to the edge of the board. It doesn't matter what edge of the board it is, force the king to the edge of the board. Our goal, and the easiest to visualize, is going to be to force the king up towards this edge of the board. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bring our king, and then we're going to bring our bishops up. Okay, and so the king decides he wants to go that way. So we can simply come here, cut off some of these squares. So we're going to continue following the king in an opposition so that we can force the king up. Force the king up. Right, and now we're cutting off this square. So we're cutting off these light squares, and our king cuts off these three. So essentially, he can come here temporarily, but we'll just we'll, we'll move him out of the way. Bring the king. And now, you've brought your king to f6, right? Your king is on an ideal square, because this is where the pattern begins. So, what we're going to do is, we need to get our knight to f7 to prevent the king from having this square available. And we need to get our bishop to f5 to essentially allow us to, to come here and prevent the king from going on the light square so that it's forced in this direction, right? We need to force the king toward a8 now. Now that we've gotten the king toward the edge of the board, we need to force it to a8. So we can simply cut off one of the squares here, cut off the light square, and now the knight cuts off the dark square. Simply come here, nice and easy. So this setup here is the ideal one we're looking for, right? Simply bishop behind the king on f6, knight in front of the king on f7, and the enemy king on f8 with white to move. So here with white to move, if we simply make so 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 if we simply start our, our pattern here where we're gonna make a W with the knight, right? So the knight makes a W pattern here where it only moves to these squares. If we simply start by moving the knight, the king is gonna move over. So first we have to cut off the light square to force the king in this direction. So first move is bishop h7, cutting off the light square. Right? When the king moves over, you now begin your W pattern, right? Can you see the shape of the W there? Right? It makes a nice little W here. So now you begin the W pattern. Right? And now you bring the king. And you're going to temporarily allow the king out. Don't worry, right? Because we can simply bring our knight continuing in the W pattern, right? And now the knight cuts off these two dark squares. However, right, if the king had come this way, same idea, right? The knight is still cutting off these two dark squares. So we have to prevent the king from coming to this light square again, right? We, we need to use the bishop to restrict the king's light squared movement because the knight is doing a good job restricting the dark squared movement here. So what we need to do is use the other piece. So there's only one square that prevents them from going to a6, and that's bishop d3. So now you've cut off these light squares. You've cut off these dark squares. The king is trapped in a box. Look at... Look at, look at these squares, right? This is the only places that the king can go, right? The king has these squares, it has this square, and it has this square. So, now you simply make a waiting move, right? The king goes back up the board, and now you simply restrict the box even smaller, right? Make the box even smaller. Now, the king only has these squares, right? So, you force the king into the box, you can now bring your king over. Now, what you want to do is you want to be able to restrict the light squared movement again. So you can come this way, right? However, I recommend you go towards the middle with a waiting move, and then as soon as they step onto a light square, you give them a check on g6. So by giving them a check on g6, it allows you to force the king over with tempo, so to speak. And now it allows you to continue your w pattern, right? Remember, the w pattern is the only way the knight moves. Once you've cut off the light square, you continue in the w pattern. So continue in the W pattern, right? And now, if you bring the king over, right, you have a problem because if you bring the king over, their king is going to come back this way. So, and, and you won't be covering the E7 square. So you can't bring your king just yet. You have to make a waiting move with the bishop. So now, again, the king is going to come back towards the center because it doesn't want to run to the A8 corner. So what you want to do now is give a check with the knight completing the W pattern, right? Remember the W pattern, right? Now you've completed the W pattern. When the knight and the bishop are opposite 
like this, the king is forced towards the knight because the bishop covers the square and the king covers the dark square. So now you continue to follow, continue to follow, and now simply cut off the light squares again, right? Simply cut off the light squares. You bring the knight. You don't want to come here, right? Because that would be a stalemate. The king would have no legal moves. So you make a waiting move with the bishop and then you give a check. Give it another check, and that's the checkmate right there. So that's how you mate with bishop and knight. So we're going to show you again one more time, just real quickly. I'm going to click through the moves for you. So again, right here, it's all about restricting black's king's movement, right? So what you have to do is with the bishop, you're using the bishop to control the light squares to force the king to the edge. You're using the knight in a W pattern. Simply, once you have this W pattern down, you'll understand that you're using the knight in a specific way to restrict certain squares. So the knight does a good job of restricting squares and the bishop does a good job of restricting squares, forcing the king into the corner. So what we're gonna do is bishop h7 restricting the king. And then once the king moves towards the a8 square, we start our w pattern. Knight comes in the w pattern, king moves over and we follow. We simply follow here because we need to restrict more dark squares. And now we're going to temporarily allow the king out. So temporarily allow the king out. The knight covers the two dark squares. The king comes here. And now you have to cover the light squares. So we use our bishop on d3, covering the light squares, right? Preventing the king from coming out this way. And now what you do, again, you make a waiting move because the king is currently on a light square. But if you give a check, right, the king will have this escape path and you'll be... You'll be, in, you'll be in some trouble now because you have to be careful of the 50 move rule, right? If you make a mistake here and you allow the king back out, you're not going to be able to mate in time because the 50 move rule will force a draw. So you have to be careful of that. So you simply make a waiting move. The king goes back and you cut it off even more. You restrict more squares. So you continue and now you can follow with the king, right? You bring the king over. And now you make a waiting move with the bishop because you want to be able to give a check, forcing the king back. And now you simply continue with your W pattern. Now here, you can't bring the king because you would then force the king back the other way and you would need to come back again. So here you make a waiting move with the bishop that continues to cover the E8 square. And then you continue with your W pattern. This pattern here is another one you should be familiar with, right? These three pieces. Because now the king is forced away from the bishop because the bishop covers this square and the king covers this square, right? Look at this. So the king is forced into the corner. You follow, and the king has continued to be forced into the corner because now your king is covering this square, the bishop's covering this square, and their king has no has no moves to go this way. So the king has to the king has to move this way, right? So we're forcing the king where we want it. So the king has to go that way. We continue to follow. And now, if they want to try to come back, it's fine because our bishop can give a check here again, rinse, rinsing and repeating the same pattern, right? So they can come if they had come back. You simply give the check, and now they're forced into the corner. And then you're simply going to deliver the mate. So once you come here, right, the bishop now does a good job of cutting off the squares. You bring the knight. Again, the knight only moves to these squares. However, eventually the knight will have to go to a6 to give a check to make the checkmate. Now the king goes back into the corner. You cannot come here because it's not a check, right? If you come here now, you'll be stalemating the enemy king because they won't have any legal moves. King covers these squares, and your knight would be covering this square. The king would have no legal moves. You'd stalemate it. Don't stalemate these winning positions. So now what you do is you make a waiting move with the bishop. Very simple, nice and easy. King comes over. The bishop's covering this square. The king's covering this square. So now we have the optimal setup. We can give a check in the, on the side of the board, right? Forcing the king back into the corner. And now we've cut off all the king's squares. All you have to do now is give a final check to deliver the checkmate. And that's how you mate with bishop and knight. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching the video. And don't forget to practice this. You have to practice it a lot. Thanks for watching.